Well, I owe everybody an apology. I uh, got the Jeep all put together. We took it to the dealership. Um, and the monk, in the midst of it all, basically, they took well over, oh, probably two months just to get it right because for some reason they tried to work me into their schedule like hey we're gonna go ahead and get you uh we're gonna put the your your jeep in with in between other cars so we reduce the amount of labor in reality i just wanted my jeep back but they took forever and i never even asked for that so with the whole thing that happening and then life etc shamefully it's a year later and here i am making the final video so I've had plenty of you ask for it and I, uh, I feel like a jerk because when I'm watching a series, I wanna see the start to the finish. I'm a huge believer in finishing a project and making it an amazing uh, result. It's just kind of like having artwork, you know? It's your own satisfaction, like, but for machines, you can drive it and have fun with it. So um, the Jeep actually resulted amazing. Uh, a lot of people get a little leery with flood cars because with flood cars, you have two kinds. One, obviously you get your fresh water and then salt water are the, is the other one. Well, the Jeep, kind of a real rewind of what it was, the Jeep was a fresh water. So per what I had looked at and seen what was up with the, with the, with the vehicle, it actually had uh, been a fresh water. In fact, the headlights were like halfway full of water. They looked like fish bowls. And they, uh, so I could tell, and it was clean, like drink drinking water clean. So I knew I was okay starting there because it was fresh water and two, it was clean. But when you get into salt water, that's when you start dealing with corrosion because the, the salt starts to destroy and eat away the copper wiring, which basically is the death sentence for most cars that become a flood car. So basically, um, when I took it to the dealership, I had already done all of the pre-programming. As you saw in prior videos, we did all of, we replaced every single thing that was electronic underneath the dash, underneath the hood. I took every single harness apart, cleaned it with electronics cleaner and a toothbrush, made it dry out. I had to drain the gas tank, remove all of the fuel. Um, turns out in that video that I did with the gas tank, it actually did have water in it and I had to replace it. So, well, I had to clean it and then take it out. But uh, in, all in all, it turned out to be uh, a really good project. A lot of people are like, what? You can't, I can't believe this thing was underwater. And well, if with anything, it's like you can fix pretty much anything because it's just a piece of machinery. That means replacing a part with a part, then that's all you do. Is it a little bit of a headache sometimes? Yeah. My wife always says it's not a problem if it can be solved with money. <laughs> so it's just a matter of a financial thing. So most insurance companies just wanna write them off because, well, the thing is with those cars is you never know. There could be gremlins you're chasing left and right, left and right. But this is the first flood car I've worked on and quite honestly, it wasn't as expensive as I thought it would be. Um, all in all, so I bought the, the Jeep for 13,000 at the, uh, insurance auction. And then all in all together, I paid probably in the vicinity of about $7,000 for all of the repairs and all of the aftermarket parts combined. That includes a brand new transmission. Um, the transmission I had was working okay, but I could tell there was a little bit of a flare when you have a shift. So I didn't want anyone, I didn't want to be pulling something or driving down the road on a long trip and having that transmission just go out on me and being stuck in the middle of nowhere. So for preventative ma ma maintenance and measures, I basically just took it and had it rebuilt. It cost me 3,500 bucks to have the transmission rebuilt. Rest of this stuff is with the dealership of getting things reprogrammed, new fuse panels, um, harnesses needed to be added to, plus the labor, of course, costs an arm and a leg. Nowadays, everybody's charging like 150 bucks an hour, so it's ridiculous. So, um, anyways, without further ado, I will go over the different things in the Jeep that I did, give you some feedback, and I promise you, 
if you if you're persistent with something and you find the right project it all it can turn out to be a really gratifying thing and uh, you can get something that's a forty fifty thousand dollar rig for a half the price um, yeah, you drive around with a salvage title, but last time someone walked up to me and said, hmm, is your Jeep salvage title or is it clean? Because that's going to determine whether I think it's cool or not. Everyone that tells me they see my Jeep, they're like, that's a badass Jeep. So without further ado, I'll show it to you. a little backstory on the interior so when I got this Jeep it had um, I believe 41 or 42 thousand miles on it so I'm gonna crank it over start it up you can see there's not a single light on the dash so what I decided to do was I decided to go through open the stereos coming on hang on a second so what I decided to do is just to track how many miles I've got on this thing since I rebuilt it. So I'll tack through here. As you see, that has 9,671 miles on it. So there's my trip meter. But, but for the A, that is when I reset that to zero when I rebuilt the Jeep. So I have driven this thing 9,617 miles since I rebuilt it. It has been as reliable as the day is long. Every single thing works on it. There's not a light on in the dash, except obviously the seat belt because I'm not buckled in. But aside from that, what I did is I went ahead and went online and I found this backup system, this amazing touchscreen, uh, very nice like iPad type of thing, type of uh, stereo that I installed in this thing. And I tell you what, it's pretty awesome because I the Jeep didn't come with a backup camera. So it came with the kit. This kit was only 200 bucks, guys. So if you want a super nice stereo system or a nice touchscreen interactive thing that does screen play, etc., then you can. But watch, once I put it into reverse, the reverse camera is huge and it's nice and clear. And it also ties in with your steering wheel. So these things bend with it. So it gives you an idea where it is. It's all plug and play. Only thing I had to do was wire the camera into my reverse lights and that's when it kicks on. And I put it back into drive or park, it goes back to normal. Um, all of my steering wheel controls work with the volume, if you hear that. And I can also change the channel on this side. So basically I have the benefit of all of that um, tied in. So I have all the new um, technology. It is Bluetooth and it does have the microphone built in right here so I can speak and I can listen to, through my speakers. So I have the full interaction, interactive uh, technology that you would see on a Jeep or, or a newer vehicle. Even though this is a 2016, Jeeps are about as simple and basic as they get. So um, just so you know, that is was a, that was a great upgrade and a uh, I would recommend putting something like this in any Jeep if you're wanting something a little more modern. Um, as far as the pod lights came on, these things all came in clutch. The rear bumper lights are tied in, as you saw on the rear bumper. Those turn on, those are amazing for backing up. Um, then you have your LED light bar, you can have your windshield lights, which are just right here in front. And then you also have the bumper lights that I had tied in with the front bumper, and then obviously the two pod lights on top of the push bar. So um, the interior of the Jeep, 
all came out pretty good. Obviously, I've been driving this thing for a year, but uh, I'll tell you what, guys. I never thought I'd like a Jeep as much as I do, but I really do. So if you want to fix one up and make it a fun project, highly recommend. So now we're at 51,229 miles. Again, I bought this with uh, nine, almost 10,000 miles less, which means I bought it at 41,000. So I got a 41,000 mile Jeep for 13,000 bucks. And it was already lifted and it had the wheels and tires and the running boards on it. So not too shabby of a find. All right, well, I'm gonna go to the next option. I'll show you what it's about. If you notice right in here, you can see that this was welded on top of that nut there and on top of that bracket. No, they're not the prettiest beads, I admit that. I was ran out of gas, but uh, on my on my uh, MIG welder, but that bumper kept tilting down to the point where it was basically doing this when I was pulling a trailer. And clearly it wasn't uh, staying put because you just have these two and then you have two in the middle, the two in the middle that is right behind the hitch and you have the other side. So I welded those up so that bumper wouldn't sag anymore. So it's a great bumper, but the mounting points for the stock part of the Jeep weren't. So I re-welded those on there. So hopefully that bumper will stay put now from when we pull trailers, because we use it a lot when we go to the sand dunes, we use it a lot when we go to the lake to pull the jet skis, or really razors as well. So all in all, man, it's a great vehicle. Maybe a little underpowered for my opinion, but I guess the new ones are coming out with Hemis and V8s, but for now this one works just fine and I'm perfectly happy with it. Here's another tip, if you're wanting to rebuild a Jeep, if you put a light bar on top of these things, that cover I put on there is literally a lifesaver. For some reason when the wind passes over top of these light bars, they are so loud, it feels like there's an issue going on with your tires, there's a vibration. It's so loud that it's almost deafening inside of the Jeep. So they call them aero lids, they're not cheap. They're like a hundred something dollars for those things. But, and I'm no way trying to endorse this, but I had to actually attach it special, a little differently onto mine so it would stay because my light bar doesn't quite match the size it needed for that. But I found it on eBay, it had a little bit of a tint to it, so I thought it worked well. But tell you what, it saved my butt from having to uh, figure something else out because of the vibrations and the wind. So by putting that light bar on there, light bar cover on there, it literally took it all away. Before I thought it was like a differential going out or something because that's how bad the hum was. I thought, oh shit, I've got some other problems I've got to fix that I didn't expect after draining all the fluids. But literally from that light bar, that light bar itself, was uh, was a game changer by, by just putting that little cover on there. So there you have it with like the updates of the Jeep. I don't know if I left anything out, but uh, for the most part, it's uh, it's been a really good project. And it, honestly, I kind of worked out a few of the things as I went with like the stereo and then obviously trial and error with the bumper. Um, the exhaust system had some brackets that broke while I was driving, but all in all, I just kind of had to do the minor adjustments as we went. I mean, a few things came on down the road, like I had to get a new ABS system put in it because, well, the old one, I guess, just got shot or whatever. It had leaks, and anyways, it was just not reading right. And if your ABS system doesn't work, your traction control system doesn't work, and your cruise control doesn't work. So I had to replace that module. It was a thousand bucks to do it, but I'd rather have safe brakes, and I'd rather be able to hit the cruise control when I'm taking a longer drive versus not. So. I think the Jeep turned out amazing. Um, it's probably the best uh, project we've had come out as far as uh, severe damage like we did before. Um, I will be doing a video that's coming out. We are building a Shelby GT500 now that's actually a water damaged. That car itself um, was out of Louisiana. So that car, I don't know if it's kind of a mixture between salt water and fresh water. I heard that that's usually the case over there. I've never been. Um, clearly with all the hurricanes and stuff, who knows. Um, I got it as a running car, so it never got water inside the engine like the Jeep did. Like I literally drained over a gallon of water out of the engine of that thing. And I did not replace the engine, guys. That's the same engine. All I did was change the oil several times. And I also took the intake manifold off, pulled all the spark plugs out, blew all the water out of it, put 
you know, Mr. Marble Mr. Oil down on the cylinders. Sucked out with a, I actually put a, a straw onto my, onto my, uh, bat, on my shop back and I sucked all of the water out of each intake port. So it was very tedious to do this, but it saved me, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 if you think about taxes and all the other nonsense you gotta pay for when you buy a Jeep that's bone stock, but then you put all the money into the upgrades. So, plus with the low miles I've got, so I think I came out on top with that. But uh, that'll be a fun project uh, to finally close up. I'm done with it now. Um, the GT500 is the project that's uh, underway right now. We're actually building it, trying to get it all figured out. I will document that coming all together and uh, hopefully enjoy that video too. Apologize for the long break. Um, quite honestly, I didn't really quite think there was much traction. A lot of, I wasn't getting as many views. I have a couple videos out that I built a 69 Nova SS and that thing has over 10,000 views on it. And then it's just kind of a slideshow type of uh, video. But with uh, the Jeep, it was kind of, it wasn't as popular as I thought it would be because it's, I don't know, maybe it just doesn't have enough traction because I don't have a ton of followers. But I appreciate those of you who reached out to me asking for updates. It makes me want to continue to make good movies and good videos and, you know, stuff that's interesting. I've always loved to build things. That's why my channel is Summit Builds. Uh, we do razors, you know, anything off-road, anything aquatic, all of those things. So I just uh, really appreciate the support and um, I'll continue providing good content for you. Any questions, just DM me. I usually re respond. Maybe I'm not the quickest sometimes, but most of it's just because I don't see it. So um, again, thanks for everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. Although kind of like Game of Thrones, you had to wait and then over a year for the last episode. So I uh, apologize for that. But in the end, guys, I'm glad we got it finished and here's your final product. So. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.